how is thumb, how is his thumb bending backwards like that? Look at this. My thumb cannot bend backwards like it. Welcome back to Sonorous Low School of Guitar. Now listen, I've seen in my comments that a few people have recommended that I should watch this interview between Martin Parzalek and Rob Scallen. Scallen, sorry. Um, I haven't seen this at all, so this is going to be a blind reaction. For the sake of the video, let's just say I don't know anything about guitar. And this is the first time that I've ever seen any guitar video out there. And this is the first interview plus playing whatever. I don't even know what's going to go on in this video, but they've got like two guitars. So I'm guessing they're going to do some fancy techniques or something. I don't know. I guess we'll see. So bear in mind, this is a long video. This is 22 minutes long. I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible, but I'm also going to try and be um, detailed about it. And I'm going to learn as you guys are going to learn with me. So... Let's watch this video together. Let's see what's gonna happen and let's jump straight into it. Are you like the Instagram guitar player? <laughs> you don't just play guitar, you play like drums and rhythm and bass and exactly. guitar. Exactly. That's what I'll so say. It's like you take guitar and just turn the difficulty to max. Yeah, I love classical music, but I hate playing it straight the way that it's been played for centuries, yeah. basically. It's like the Bach wrote something like 500 years ago. And I love how he just plays and like talks at the same time. <laughs> oh goodness. Like why wouldn't you want to do yeah, that yeah. on the guitar, you know what I mean? What are you doing there? I like to say that it's all about circles. Circles? So it's like about this sort of motion around here, you know? Mm -hmm. so circles, that's an interesting way of describing the movements and the dynamics of his playing. He's speaking about circles, so when he's talking about, when he's doing the percussion on his guitar, he's talking about going in a circle, playing the big percussion on the guitar, and coming back to the strings. So that's quite interesting that he mentioned circles and not like a square or a triangle or whatever the shape out there is. Anyway, let's listen to it. Are you going this way or it? this way? Yeah, so I'm just like... Oh, okay. Popping Here's where fingers. we're gonna differ. That's you being yeah, a guitar, you this. A guitar player and I'm a bass player. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So it's all. Man, I, I'm a fan, so I've seen like all of your videos. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. And I and I saw that like you do these these things, which is like very weird. Yeah, like string. slap bass. Yeah. Up and right, then you like right. flamenco. Exactly. So. Oh, that sounds a lot better. Yeah, man, because you got the nails. You know the nails. Yeah, you. Like, I don't have that either. Because also quite have, polished, eh? Scratch. You have like a scratch pad here too. It's the first guitar globally produced which has that on it. It's crucial because if you like. It's actually what you're doing. That's crazy. Morrison's English is actually really, really good. You wouldn't even recognize the accents or like the Polish accents. You wouldn't even recognize it in his in his uh, in his vocabulary and the way he speaks but one thing that i have to say is before we continue with this he showed his nails already and he's got very long um nails on his on his hand obviously where else would your nails be other than your toes but uh i think it takes a special type of polish and also well nail polish and also you have to maintain those nails because i think if you don't maintain them and you grow them out like he does and you play the guitar it's gonna rip off a fingernail or two it kind of has to i mean just think about all the actions and how fast he's playing with all the like actions and also the, the amount of pressure he's applying to his fingers and his nails and the strings it's gonna pull a nail off so you have to maintain them in order to be able to play the things that he plays all right simple as that doing is like you're trying to take a full band sound and putting it on the one for guitar. sure and yeah, that's what something sure. that's so He's wild taking a and full special band about your sound, videos that people it on don't guitar. play guitar yeah See, it's like it sounds like a full band this whole thing just there's so much sound in it you have the option to just go you know like you know yeah. this thing like why why, did, why would you not want to try this yeah. sometimes right i just go straight to the slap stuff yeah here you go hey rob skellen can he can play eh well that's percussion Same thing. A little breakdown in the video. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I tried to go. go the other way. Let's go. It's almost like you're starting with the drums. Yeah. And then bringing in the melody. Although I wouldn't say that, you know, like mm -hmm. to me, like if I if I do Kashmir, for example, that was one of the really big things that happened yeah. to me. If the melody goes, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm just gonna keep playing. Cause like, come on. Oh my word. I can do like. Sounds like his guitar is tuned to open G minor, but I could be wrong. But <laughs> yeah. If I do something original, don't I, smoke kids. Oh, that's risky. Like, same harmony, but like completely different vibe. Dude, that is insane. Fill in the gaps that are left mm -hmm. open yeah. with mm -hmm. your music, with your guitar. Mm -hmm. Right. I started my career on YouTube trying to turn one guitar into right. like a right. full right. band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like actually doing it. Like you're doing well, what I tried so, to do. It's a rock scale and being humble. You're actually a great player right. as well. So it's not like nothing works out for you. Don't <laughs> compare <laughs> yourself. Let me give this one thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see all the hours you've played here. Because you really have these distinct sounds between them. Yeah, I mean, it's like they're all really about tightness, you know? Yeah. Like the kick, I'm kind of like mutated at this point. Like I have this thing here. I don't know if mm. you can tell. Like, What is that? You know, what is that? It's called a ganglion. It's what a it's ganglion. called. Ganglion. I have that on my head now. From, ganglion? Uh, from doing that? Yeah, so just from years of doing this. And also there. the thumb. I don't know if you have that too. How uh, how is thumb how is his thumb bending backwards like that? Look at this. My thumb cannot bend backwards like this. Look, he's it's like almost doing a complete 180. Maybe a 360 even. Like I can't even. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh Tosin Abasi can do that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tosin Abasi. It's exactly the same thing. I mean, I don't know if it helps, but like. I've always Men had drop. it, probably four different snares we can do, mm -hmm. you know, like this is probably the hardest one. Just like a really... Slapping out with his whip, index you know? finger. Yeah, the whipping. index would like strike the strings, just like yeah, a yeah. yeah. That's just one snare, right? Like you can mm -hmm. do, that's another one. Yeah. I hit it with my uh, ring finger, mm -hmm. right? And But then, always go back. Yeah. yeah. So now you're ready in position. To... Gotta get my leg out of there. Right? The same like if you do it here, same exact thing, ring finger, but... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Nice, Rob. Yeah. Rob I breaking down, but he lost the confidence like halfway yeah, through. Circular, circular, like fluid motion. Yeah. Circular what motions. What you there with your left hand? It's perfect. Yeah. Just try to tap something with that. That's not bad, Rob. Yeah. Come on. Believe in yourself. And then Martin comes. Tune to you know uh, G minor open Let's like. Do it. Your boy's got good ears. Put it all with left hand like. <laughs> you know. And then you can do He's playing club music on his guitar. Then go into the whole thing again. Yeah. He can play the sounds or the songs that can get the girls dancing on elevated surfaces. Lady Slayer. Listen to this. Club music. It's crazy. shows so much control too that you can just show me the bass line and talk. Yeah. It. I've done a few videos That's like awesome. that, like a uh, Slap oh. Bass 101. Yeah. We're on the same wavelength. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Video, yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Talking while playing is another. But the truth is, I never think about two things. You take one of these things mm -hmm. and you learn it so well, you just can, can play it and Muscle memory. Else. Muscle memory. Yeah. Right. Disconnect your brain from the yeah, guitar. Of course. How Muscle are you doing memory. Today? <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. The Chicago water is not great for my hair, but yeah. other than that, I mean, you still look great. Yeah. yeah. Stop, so, Marcin. Stop. Is feeling better? It's much better because you gave me these like. It's gross how good you are. Yeah. <laughs> they, were, they were just all. No, I don't. They I'm were not. just all. <laughs> no, but American holes are like hundred <laughs> times stronger yeah, uh, than European holes. Yeah, know? yeah. You're not consciously thinking yeah. about two things at once. Yeah. Well. Something that I say to like subconsciously playing talk guitar a lot. Mm. Can you walk and talk at the same time? Yeah, Walking and talking are really, really, really hard, and you had to practice Not it really wrong. seriously, though. <laughs> yeah, playing guitar really, really, really and, long and talking. Time. It's that is easy difficult. because you do it every day. Walking and talking. Japanese music. There's so many arpeggios. Mm -hmm. So, like one of them would be. This is something that you can play on an electric, you know, like just you know scales and arpeggios. But you know, if you played five. Talking about Paganini, um, if you guys have ever watched the movie called Crossroads, um, it's about 
do you, do you guys know the old karate kid? I think his name is Ralph Macchio. Macchio. He was the main um, protagonist in that movie, and he meets uh, some sort of harmonica blues musician, and they take him along this whole journey because he wants to learn Robert Johnson's 30th or 29th song. And uh, basically, the, the end battle of the song, he is playing against Steve Vai, and he's playing Paganini's, one of Paganini's symphonies. And I actually went and learned that song because it's very cool arpeggios to learn. And it's cool that he's referenced Paganini because Paganini was one of the greatest, if not the greatest violinist of all time. And um, the fact that he's referencing him and showing what he's playing um, shows you his classical background as well. It's kind of normal, you know, like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's I mean, normal. a lot of people, people do, do that all the time. time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they do, you know, it's just arpeggios. You elevate that, yeah, you it's add just thickness, you know, that you can't really get with an electric guitar or anything. Mm -hmm. same, same exact thing. Then you go more like this. <laughs> Damn. Only just yeah. tap the kick here. When you play a uh, bass note, just... Mm. Yeah, it's kicking it as well. That's cool. Mm. And it's using this, what would Caligula, like, Caligula, like whatever. You're too strong, whatever. man. You know, like... <laughs> you're too, I'm hitting it too hard. You're too buff, bro. Like, <laughs> just... A little subtlety, you know, okay. just like... Can you play with, like, your uh, ring finger too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's, hey. It's like perfect, suddenly, yeah. Instead of thinking like, oh, I have the drums, rhythm, melody, yeah. you're like, you're thinking of melody, rhythm, and bass all at the same time, oh, and sure. thinking about it as singular actions. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and for me, this, that's one thing. It's yeah. not three things. Yeah. <laughs> this is so hard. It's very hard. This is really it? hard. It's very hard. Your videos are already really impressive. But like when you actually give them a shot, yeah, or well, give them a try, they're even more impressive. I, I've never seen like this, you know? Like you play uh -huh. all these weird instruments, and you just kind of clicks, like you get it. Mm -hmm. At least that's what it seems like to me. Like when I play other instruments too, yeah. I'm taking stuff that I already know, right, and, and just applying it to the instrument. Right. Yeah, and but that's how you're supposed to do it. But what yeah, Rob. You're doing really well. Nice. I'm just shredding on it. it. Sounds like a Phrygian mode. It sounds a little Egyptian as well. I count it. Something that comes Whoa. out of the Middle East. Even though Egypt is in North Africa. To go through for people that maybe are new to the guitar, right. there's so many different ways that you're just getting a note. I have a classical background. The nails are a big part of that, mm -hmm. just like plucking, finger style type things. Yeah. The melody would just usually be taken by your, you know, index and middle finger, let's say, mm -hmm. and the bass is your thumb. But, for example, I get here. And I want to play this chord, which would be impossible to... Yeah, he's, he's, he played the E string twice there, and he's like, the second time he played it, it sounded a little deeper, because he's also playing... He's, he's like, there's more thickness to the notes, which makes it uh, all the little subtleties to um, playing guitar. And that's where the whole tone thing comes in. Like, tone comes through the hands and the soul, and uh, Marston is really explaining it really well here. We're about halfway through the video now, so I'm not going to talk too much more, but I just needed to bring that up. To play this way, it's like what I'm just doing. So basically I can go, yeah. then the stretch, you know? Mm -hmm. Both hands are equal. Both your hands are both like percussion, yeah. rhythm, and melody. Making it like conscious decisions where, okay, I can play the kick here, or I can play it here. And then the way that I Same choose this is not sound based. It's like, okay, if I do it here, I, ha I can do like, So precise. You know, that here, right? Mm. Yeah, that, that was kind of cool. Right? Yeah. <laughs> then you don't have to stop here because I want to add a melody, it's like a sort of bass thing. You think, okay, what am I doing now? I'm using these, right? And then uh, on my left hand, I'm using 
a few of my fingers, but you know, there's so much stuff left, you know, which can utilize ring finger. By doing this, it's free, right? So I can do like... You use those things, you know, just kind of try and figure out where each thing fits. This is maybe the hardest it's been to learn an instrument yeah. Yeah. on my channel, maybe. Right, and this it's a guitar. Be, this is my instrument. Campfire type instrument. You know? Yeah. It seems that all oh, the hardest part is gonna be like, like all of these things here. Yeah. That's really not the case. This like mm -hmm. difficulty curve is the small elements like this. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. Whatever melody you find, can I play it with just my left hand? Which you always can, yeah. you know, if, if you try hard enough, you always can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, like, there's so much stuff you can do right here. Is that how you start learning songs? Like, do you start with the melody? I don't do it by blocks, you know? Because mm -hmm. if I play... It's like... I always do everything at once. So you it's... don't learn the melody once and no, then, and then no, add I drums? No, I never do that. It's a big huh. mistake because, like, you know, imagine learning this. Yeah, that's right, because you'll get caught up in just the melody. Um, so Martinson tries to play everything at once which is very important because you're trying to like learn all the different dynamics of the song you're not just trying to learn the melody and uh for martin that's a very important point that he brought up and i'm glad he did uh don't just learn the melodies of the songs learn the percussion parts learn the bass parts learn the walking bass because if you're going to be a musician and you want to be a great musician then you're going to have to perform solo every now and then so let's just listen to more than what he's got to say all right What's the connection with this? Like, half of these notes are played like without the yeah. hand, right yeah. hand, you know? The bass mm. is completely different positions, then you need to you do tap. So right. you just go right in trying to learn the melody yeah. with all yeah. of this. Yeah, always with a metronome. Yeah. You rewire your brain a bit, uh -huh. I think. You don't think of here's the melody, here's the rhythm. You're thinking of it as one piece. It's so foreign to me to think about the kick drum with my wrist. Right, and then do you'll do it twice, kick. right? So, yeah. Yeah. He's using a lot of wrist action here, and uh, it's basically for the kick. He's doing the percussion with his whole right hand, but uh, also he's trying to work in and incorporate the percussion with his left hand as well, uh, by the way it seems. Uh, he's not just playing the melody or the bass. He is trying to play everything at the same time, and that is so difficult. And Tommy Emmanuel also has a video out there where he explains this really well, where he's trying to break down the whole song, and a lot of people start with the melody, that's a good place to start, but if you want to, I'd, I'd say you should start with the melody and also the um, the drums. Start with the kick. Start with the kick and the melody. That would be the easiest way to do this. So that you can keep rhythm with the one hand while also working in space. Well, working in the spaces with your, with your left hand to play the melody and then the lead vocals and also the solo on top of that. And then also try... <laughs> Really try and work in that walking bass. Walking bass is just a bass that just doom, 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 doom. The bass is always there. And if you don't know what the bass is on a guitar, the bass is basically the three top strings that you can use um, as your bass, and the bottom three are more like your um, treble and also, I forgot the name, but anyway, the treble and also the, you're gonna use those three bottom strings on your guitar for the melody because they're higher notes, okay? And there are also thinner strings and lighter strings, so you would get the more sharpier notes out of them, while the bass would sound a little deeper and lower. Um, so yeah, let's continue. Yeah, you nearly there now. So you got that. The next note is the snare. We need to play the melody and the snare at the same time. So what I do is this whole space here, Take your uh, ring finger, hit just one string, mm -hmm. and then go like, it would be like, very slow. So you got that, and then you go. Toxicity. I did not know that's Play what you were doing. And you're getting the string at the same time. Yeah. Two first chords. Hey. Let's go! Rob is actually doing great. great. Like, I bet you with enough time, I'd be able to job. do it. Yeah. Of course you will. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not like it's impossible. Like, it's just so on. foreign to me, yeah. You make to it me, sound this is impossible. the most fun way of playing the guitar. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's Marching. no tradition attached to yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Getting that snare sound is a yeah. really interesting one because I've never thought about getting this part of the guitar. Yeah. You need a snare drum, and during that part, your hands are doing so much. Which one can you well, fit again, into the motion you're already I, I doing? Think, where are you going to play the toms? Like, if I do this, I will have to do. 
which is very uncomfortable. Yeah. This is not a nice movement. Or which this is very like small. You choose, okay. And it's perfect, right? The sound is perfect, but also like like back. Right? You know, always back. Big thing for me over the dun, pandemic, dun, which is short one, dun. of course. 50 seconds, that's like the sweet spot for me. There's been like some stigma a little bit. It's like, oh yeah, but it's like you're squeezing in so much in 50 seconds. It's really music, you know? I think with your videos especially, like, come on, like you can't say that you don't, you can't play the hell out of a guitar. When I started YouTube in 2007, no one took it seriously yeah. at all. It's like, like a vicious circle almost. You yeah. Know? The main thing that people don't get is that when you see a video on Instagram or on TikTok, mm -hmm. That video was made for Instagram or TikTok, right? Yeah. You know, if you go on my Spotify or something, or even on YouTube, there is like Bach Toccata, five minute arrangement, you mm -hmm. know, production, everything. But then you go to TikTok and I play something live and like make, you know, a crazy arrangement, a comment which will say, uh, yeah, I couldn't listen to this for longer than like one minute. But like it's I like made the video <laughs> to be one. Yeah, there is a lot of stigma about that, uh, especially about Polyphia as well because a lot of people say like they're playing too many notes at the same time and it's it's too much for your ear and i've said that as well and i have to kind of disagree with martin on this one and he's trying to fit in when he says he's trying to fit in too much into a 50 or 40 second period for some people it can be you know some people just don't want to listen to all those notes at the same time um because where the band comes in that they're all playing different instruments and it all sounds distinct in their own way, but if you're all playing it on the same instrument, it might sound like too much. It might like sound like there's too much going on at the same time, and it might feel like you're overdoing things. But with Martin, that I find is quite intriguing, is that he he knows this. He understands the stigma around the playing of the guitar and about the new modern day prog metal, and also. Um, like the Tosin Abbasis and the, the Tim Hensons and the Ichika Nitos. They're all trying to do exceptionally fast, amazingly quick stuff on the guitar to just like catch your ear and also like trying to like keep it on the edge, you know, so you're not really waiting for the next note because the next note is already there, if you know what I mean. So personally, I can only listen to, uh, let's say, Polyphia or Ichika Nito music for like an hour at a time and that's that's like stretching it because after a while I like just have to take off my headphones or turn off the speakers because I'm like I have to take a break because this is like getting too much for my ear and it's 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 not all gonna stick so when you play too many notes not all of the no nice melodies are going to stick um, but if you play a little bit less it might stick a little quicker and it might be a little more catchy so I do disagree with him about the fact that there's that he doesn't agree with the stigma or maybe he does agree with the stigma but personally i also feel like too many notes also is too much for your ear sometimes you have to leave a little bit of space to let the song breathe and also give yourself a rest and give people's ears a rest, a rest. because you need to think about people's perceptions about your music as well as your own perception of the music you might think a song is great whereas other people might think it is not as great and that's okay. That is completely fine. It's not for everyone. There will be other people like the connoisseurs, like we are, that would find everything that this man does and every other musician does is absolutely fantastic. So without, let's just, let's just continue watching. Yeah. One minute, I think certainly in our case is there being a stigma around a new platform is a sign of opportunity. Right, yeah. It's like, for lack of a better word, there's like open real estate available yeah, on this yeah, new platform yeah. that you can go after and do something yeah. really cool, which absolutely. you absolutely have done with like vertical videos. Well, thank videos. you so much for that, Rob. Yeah, you're nailing it. <laughs> <laughs> but Rob is, is, that our, is that our segue boy. to talking He's about like nails? Us. <laughs> like us, if you've been guitar, a guitar player for a really long time, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a pretty normal thing. Like, oh, you play classical guitar, or right, like you play right. flamingo. Yeah. The length is real. It's like, you know, it's yeah. my actual nail, but then I coat it in gel, like pretty thick level of huh. gel. Just to is, add stability? Or? Yeah, so to add strength, basically. Hmm. Because like if you do this, all day, yeah. right? Things like that stuff, you know, or, or that, or that. These are steel strings, you know, and I play yeah. 13s, so they're pretty thick. Mm. That's so very thick. if you didn't have that is very like, heavy. any reinforcement for your nail, like they're gonna just chop like off. Like Stevie Ray Vaughan type of heavy. 
five yeah. guitar picks. Exactly. My so nails so look so terrible. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's like the polar opposite, man. And the nails have such a particular sound. Every note has such an attack, has such clarity. And when yeah. you're doing that much, you need that attack. You need, you need it to like yeah. punch through. As you say, like if I'm doing this, are not Yeah, easy. I know. You've been telling me like They're the whole day. They're not easy. Those yeah, are yeah. really, really hard. Yeah. And you're doing it amongst all those other things. But and you're getting go. it with your pinky? Yeah, of course. So if I'm doing a harp harmonic, it's like with my thumb. Oh. Like. Marcin just made a face of disapproval. What's impressive it's to like, me, though, is you're doing it amongst all those other things. Yeah, let me, let me show you. The harmonics. Let me Even show you how it's done. nailing them. A lot of people think that, especially with the technical How things, it's that? all about just like Wait, wait, wait. We're gonna rewind this? Doing it amongst all those other things. Yeah, and you're nailing sure. the harmonics. Even past here, you're nailing them. A lot of people think that, I don't especially with the technical things, it's all about just like practice. You can practice less the way if you practice well. So like if you have a plan and you understand which areas you're not as good at, then you just hone in on them. You practice with focus. It's enough, you know? So I was never like the kid who did like eight hours practice, you know? And I knew them because I was in a classical yeah. environment. So there's there's plenty of them, you know? Of course, I practiced uh, a lot, like four or five hours, but That's like never, never more. For mm -hmm. me, it's much more about conceptualizing what it is you're doing. Oh, he's using his pinky in his index. That's different, man. That's difficult. Zero, zero, eleven, twelve. 11, I love 13, the language. 12. Yeah, yeah, I just speak. I just think it's yeah. is the thief of joy always remember that never compare yourself to other players you're on your own journey you're trying to make music the way work for you the way you want it to even though there are a lot of great players out there like martin all right he is a special type of talent and you could be too in your own way and you don't have to prove anything to anyone else other than the world other than to yourself <laughs> It's a Rob Scallon vibe <laughs> track. Right? I'm like the minor guy, you know, you're such a major guy. <laughs> I wouldn't call myself a tick. That was a little sketchy that Martin just said. Don't take that literally. He just called himself a minor guy. Please don't. <laughs> Please do not take that literally. He means in the 
in terms of music, he's a minor chord or key, a minor key type of guy. All right, Martin, be careful with the things you say out there. People will take it literally and they will try and cancel you. Don't let them cancel you, my boy. Stay true to yourself. So guitar, is that yeah. to me that sounds wrong? I wouldn't consider you like a TikTok guitarist or even me like a YouTube guitarist really, though I am proud to call myself a YouTuber. Of course. I think we're just musicians and these are the platforms. I made an Instagram account. One of the people at my label at Sony, they were like, hey, make a TikTok, you know? And I was like, no. <laughs> Love you just name dropped his label. <laughs> yeah, I've got my label. I'm just signed by Sony. Yeah. I'm just the, I'm just like one of the coolest guys out there, you know, I've got one of the biggest record labels in the world who made the first Spider-Man movies, uh, Sony. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> like, honestly, no, that's okay, but like, you can literally just post the same stuff you do already mm. on TikTok. Mm. It's like, well, if I can do that, I'll do that. Then it just goes insane. Bro, well, let's make one now. Let's do it. Should we stand up? You're always standing up. Oh, that's, yeah, it's right? definitely, man, yeah. Now look at that pose. Yeah, yeah, this is <laughs> power I love that. Welcome to my world. Check this out. Oh no. Which camera do I show? Like the massacre it's Oh no. Now, how Ugh. long is it gonna take you to repair that nail? <laughs> His well, nail it's, just it's came off. Like 30 minutes in a nail salon. Oh, part of it. What if we just, tomorrow, we just find a nice spot? Mm. And, uh, That's good content right there. Yeah, <laughs> Chicago, uh, yeah. Skyline. Maybe this is the end of the video. It's really hard to be Marcin. <laughs> That's Mar just the reality. Marcin? Check out Marcin on Instagram, TikTok, Do all of it. Back? Cool. No. <laughs> I'm back. If you want Mar I'm going to end the video here, but I just want to say thank you for tuning in, guys. Um, so I'm going to have a few things to say about this video. And I just want to say, like, it was so instructive to watch this video because Martin didn't only just, like, introduce his uh, playing style and his ideas and his techniques, but he also spoke a bit about the ways around that and how you can maintain your playing and one of them was his nails and I know he broke his nail at the end and that just goes to show like even when you when you're a well-groomed nail guy <laughs> you can still break a nail or two so look after your fingers look after your muscles because you can still pull a muscle out there it's called it's like the opposite of tennis elbow because tennis elbow is more like on the inside uh, but like guitar elbow is like on the outside so remember to warm up Martin was well warmed up Rob He's also a great player. I like Rob. He's a more metal type of guy, but he plays a whole bunch of different type of music um, and instruments. Um, it's cool to see that he also said, like, there are so many different platforms out there. And if you're a musician, you're part of the one, remember, you're part of the top 1% of the world, even less than that. There are, so, there are, like, no people that do music. And it's really difficult to kind of promote yourselves out there. So don't be shy to go and use different platforms like TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, like like what we're trying to do right now. We're trying to promote ourselves, even though I'm a musician as well, and I want to make it out there as a musician, which I hopefully will someday. We're trying to like build a community. And it's important to keep in touch with the community, especially as a musician, because a lot of people out there are going to tell you that, oh, you shouldn't be a musician. You're just going to be a starving artist or this and this is going to happen and you should go study accounting or whatever or engineering or whatever those there's going to be so many of those people and they're going to try and put you down and they're going to try and get you to quit music and get a real job they're going to try and get you to work a nine to five or some sort of corporate company where they're just going to use your hours and your time to make money off of you but anyway i can go on a rant about nine to fives and jobs like that there is humbleness about that and there is pride that you can take in that all right so i'm not trying to down talk it but as a musician just remember there are a whole bunch of different platforms where you can go and promote yourself so work hard work on your music play your own stuff take from the music that you've learned and your inspirations and your um, references of music classical blues rock and roll metal whatever it is incorporate it to your own style create your own sound start a band man go out there and go play for people go and be yourself Go and express yourself because that is what we need in this world, especially with AI out there. They're going to take most of the jobs there in anyway. The only jobs that are going to be left is probably like entertainment purposes. But anyway, that's that's many years from now. That's a whole different topic and I'm not going to get into that now. Um, so more about Martin. So Martin, from looking at this video and really trying to like understand you as a person, I can see a glimpse into your personality, even though I don't know you too well. But... I'm definitely going to go and try out some of your techniques because they are very complex. There's a lot of percussion involved in your playing. 
And I want you guys to understand that even though Martin said he's only practiced four or five hours, um, it's not about how many hours you practice. It's about what you do in those hours that really counts. And you can see by him only practicing four to five hours a day and maybe going on with his life and doing other things and um, creating some interpersonal relationships, you can see that that's all you really need. You don't need to expend ex an excessive amount practicing because then you're just going to start to resent your instruments. And you don't want that. You don't want to resent music or your instruments. You want to love what you do and you want to enjoy it while you're doing it. So take the hours that he's, that he's practiced, four to five hours a day. That is a good estimate to how many hours you should practice a day to be able to become a master eventually of your, of your instrument. And incorporate that type of technique and that discipline and try and do as much as you can in that one hour break them down into sections 15 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes whatever and remember to take breaks so martin from what i can tell from this video is there is a lot for us all to work on and uh, even though you've showed us a whole bunch of different techniques and playing styles and you're showing us your references and inspirations we can all incorporate the same ideas that you have and incorporate that into our own unique playing style. So thank you so much for giving us an insight into your mind and how it works and, and telling us more about your your musicianship and also showing us your pers personality a bit. Um, it feels like I know you, even though I don't, and hopefully I do someday. But uh, other than that, I just have to say thank you. This was a fantastic video. Thank you to Rob Scallon as well. Rob, you are actually a great musician. Do not compare yourself to Martin because there's, it's like I said, comparison is the thief of joy. Do not compare yourself ever. Rob, you're actually a great musician and you did really well trying to just learn the basics of what Martin is trying to show you. And you can see from his reaction, like he was impressed. I was impressed by what you were able to do with the limited time you had with him. And uh, yeah, other than that, this was a fantastic video. It was so insightful. It was great to see the two kind of like um, not polar opposites, but two type of like personalities talking and trying to like understand each other and also trying to connect through music and seeing you guys jam together. That's, that's, that's beautiful, man. And that's the great thing about being a musician and being in a band and being able to collaborate with other musicians is that you can take from them and incorporate it in your own style and they can take from you and incorporate it into their style. And it's just a beautiful thing to jam with each other. It's a different type of relationship, like how we can talk to each other and laugh about things and cry about things and talk about our experiences and what we've done in the world. But when you're playing music together, you're going to a whole different realm of space. You're not connected to time. You're not connected to this, even this reality. You're just in that moment. You have opened the channel. And that channel is the channel of music. And it is divine. It is divinity. To me, music is divinity. And it's about the closest thing you could ever come to be a superhero. I think I worded that correctly. When you're on stage and you're playing for a bunch of people and they all love it and they're all eating out of the palm of your hand, you feel like a rock star. You feel like a superhero. And you feel like you're actually contributing to this world because you're contributing to happiness. And that's music, man. You're contributing to happiness, to sadness, and the dark thing about music is you're feeding off of people's emotions sometimes, um, especially when you write a bit more depressing music, which um, a lot of people can relate to, even though you, it was in your intentions. Uh, it's a sad song and a lot of people that feel sad are going to want to listen to it to feel even more sad. So yeah, with, with all of that said, I can go on and on and talk more about Martin, but thank you, Martin. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being a human being. Thank you, Rob Scallon, for being able to contain his excellence in one single video. And uh, I just hope they make more interviews and make more videos in the future. So without further ado, guys, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Thank you for tuning in. Please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment or two. Uh, constructive criticism and criticism and some positive things and who you would like for me to react to next. Thank you so much for watching this video. This has been Sonorous Low, School of Guitar. Remember, guys, let's keep those strings slinging. Yeah. Cheers. Hi, guys. My name is Deswat. Thank you so much for watching this video and for the absolute love and support we're receiving for this channel. I just want to tell you guys a bit about our other channel called 
the SWAT. And the Instagram, also called the SWAT. This is basically my personal channel where I'm trying to showcase my artistry and my musicianship skills and also my talents as a fellow musician. So I would really appreciate it if you guys go and check it out and uh, go follow me through this fantastic journey that we call life. And a career maybe, I don't know. But uh, other than that, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, let's get those strings slinging. Cheers.